the day uh, when they go out and about. And I'm concerned mostly because I don't necessarily, I, I don't, I don't fault people if they want to wear masks. I don't fault people if they want to wear gloves, if they wanted to jump into a giant bubble and walk around in one of those things, I have no do, do what you need to do. But I guess my issue comes when we start to make blanket advice and there, there have been, uh, there have been questions from folks in the field of PPE that study these things and ask. And I think these are, these are appropriate. And I think they're fair questions to ask. We've seen conversations completely shut down around these and the bigger issue I see is also some discrimination that's happening when people aren't able to medically tolerate these masks. Like it says within the executive order, they're exempt. And yet I've seen people, and we've seen it nationally and also here in the state, kicked out of stores. We've seen people get physical and, and violent. And, and I just think, and, and I say on the other side there, I've also seen people in stores and heard stories about people shaming others for wearing masks. I don't know where we got off track on just respecting each other's individual rights and, and uh, liberty to make their own decisions about their own health. But boy, oh boy, it sure is interesting times we live in. Catherine, welcome. And I appreciate you being here with us today. Yes, thank you. And as an attorney, you're looking at this from a completely, um, this is a legal perspective. And I think people might want to get some, uh, some, some, ideas on what exactly is happening. So let's start with the executive order. What does it say and what do people know, need to know about uh, today? So um, this is executive order 2020-147. Um, so I think that's telling in and of itself that our governor has uh, decided to issue 147 executive orders in 2020 alone, considering that since 1993, all the way through 2019, we only had 605 executive orders total with all of those governors mm -hmm. but in any event this um the main thrust of what's involved in this um, begins on page three of the official order uh, paragraph one is saying that you anytime you leave your home you have to wear a mask or a as she's calling it here a face covering over your nose and your mouth mm -hmm. um, and so that's when you're any in any indoor space um, or when you're outdoors and you're not consistently maintaining, maintaining your six feet of social distancing, um, or even if you're in public transportation, uh, an Uber or Lyft vehicle would count under her uh, order here. And so what's important, though, is that uh, there's some huge contradictory pieces here. So if we jump to section three, which is what you were just talking about, um, that, you know, businesses are required to essentially refuse service to someone who is not wearing a mask, but it says for not wearing a mask uh, as required by this order. So then you have to jump back to, okay, well, who is required? Um, and then you see section two says that people are not required to wear a mask if, and then there's a series of exceptions. Uh, obviously you just mentioned they cannot medically tolerate a face covering. Uh, she has on here um, exemptions for when you're exercising, when you're eating, um, if you're having some sort of a service done to your face, essentially, and you can't, um, you know, have that on. Um, there's some other interesting ones as well, though. For example, if you're giving a speech, if you are um, engaged in actively engaged in a public safety role. But it's been interesting that she added um, paragraph 2G which um, states that you're exempt if you're communicating with somebody who is hearing impaired or otherwise disabled and where the ability to see the mouth is as essential to communication. I'm actually deaf in one ear and I've uh, grown up knowing um, I can hear people by actually reading their lips. And so for me as a disabled person in that regard, when I've gone out into the community, when I've had to go to Menards or wherever and the employees are covering their mouth, I literally do not catch what they're saying. And so uh, seeing how she's had those sign language interpreters right next to her at all of these press conferences, and I don't actually you know, understand the sign language um, language, um, but it's interesting that it took her this long to realize that that is a huge practical implication that is impacting people uh, just in the ability to communicate, let alone all the other things. So that's the main uh, thrust of the requirement is um, you know, there are some exceptions, but then let's think about how that practically plays out for these businesses. Let's say 
you have a local mom and pop shop who just wants to allow everyone to have their own freedom to choose. And they, um, they see paragraph three and it says right in here that they're going to be threatened with essentially um, temporary suspensions of their business licenses without even having a hearing. Wow. So if you're in that position and it says you're going to be threatened with that kind of a punishment, if you don't uh, prohibit customers from entering that are not wearing masks, I don't know how that's supposed to correlate with section two when we have all of these exceptions, especially the medical one. Let's just focus on that. Or the one I brought up in 2G where you're, um, someone is disabled and you know maybe you're with them. Like if my husband goes with me to a store and I communicate by reading lips primarily um, in terms of being able to hear, um, he and I both wouldn't be able to wear a mask. And how would a business owner have that information to know whether they should stop us from coming into the premise or not. This is the, this is the point that I want to, because I know there are a lot of businesses that have really struggled through the pandemic. They're now back open. They're on their feet trying to get a hold on things and they're trying to now navigate this part of it. So I'd like to, we're going to take a break. We'll grab our headlines here and then talk about this specifically when we come back and what do you need to do if you're a business with, because I know that businesses want to make sure that they um, aren't at risk of losing their license. They want to make sure they're effectively and operating in, in a healthy way for, for their folks and for the people that work for them as well. Uh, but they also want to make sure, I would, I would imagine, that they're not discriminating against people with disabilities in any way. And this type of blanket situation, unfortunately, we're seeing some doors left open for that sort of thing. And we want to just make sure that we're pretty clear on this. And so we'll do that. We'll continue our conversation. Attorney Catherine Henry's here with us right now. You'll hear more from her so you can get the clarity you need. Unmasked in Michigan some way. Uh, obviously, we're talking about that mask mandate that's gone into effect uh, now for businesses and for individuals. You'll hear more right after this on News Radio Wood 1300 and 106.9 FM. All right. Thank you, Catherine. We're still live on Facebook when we're going to take our little break here in the commercial. So if you're listening on Facebook, I'll, I just encourage you right now, if you have questions, Catherine can answer some of those for you right now. We'll we'll maybe even get to some of these on the air as well, but go ahead and type them in the comments. Feel free to share this because this is information that folks are going to, they're definitely going to need to hear and want to know about. Uh, and Catherine, again, thank you so much for being here with us today. Catherine Henry, is an attorney and uh, you've, you've got a website or two that folks might want to know about as well. Yeah. So the main website that I'm directing to uh, is restorefreedommi.com. And we're actually in the process of the other websites that I had been managing for my law firm, as well as information on the COVID-19 um, statistics and, and laws. That's all being rolled into that restorefreedommi.com. So it's a one-stop shop for people, whether they want to sign a constitutional amendment that can end this or whether they just want to stay informed about um, certain bills or certain executive orders, that's going to be that one-stop shop for them. So a lot of questions I'm sure coming in. Uh, we'll get to some of these on Facebook. If you have them, you can, you can uh, write them in in the comments here on Facebook. You can also call if you'd like at 616-774-2424. When we come back on the air, we'll get to some of these as well, but we'll answer some now too. So if you have some, go, go ahead, feel free to ask those. What kind of questions are you getting about some of this stuff, Catherine, as you, I'm sure are hearing from people on a daily basis that have questions and concerns about this. And whether it's somebody who says, you know, I'm not wearing a mask because I don't believe in it. Or somebody says, I'm genuinely concerned for my business to make sure that I'm taking the steps that I need to take, uh, keeping people safe, but also not discriminating against other people or people that have disabilities and have issues. I I've got some people that are near and dear to me and my uh, family that have some of these issues too. And uh, the last thing we want to see is when we're out in public or you have to go out for certain things or want to go out for certain things and then have to risk a confrontation. Right now, people are really testing in a lot of ways we've seen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I definitely have been shamed by people for not wearing a mask. I have some breathing issues that prohibit me from doing that. Um, I also mentioned I have that hearing disability where um, I read other people's lips. So those that go with me places that's, you know, they need to not do that. Um, 
But yeah, we've had a lot of questions, like you said, from business owners that are wanting to know what they could do um, to, you know, people. I don't know if you remember, but one of the very first stories that broke on the news about Menards denying entry for someone because they were not wearing a mask, mm. um, that was in April. And um, Deb was the name of the woman who was sitting on the walker with her oxygen tank, trying to get him into Menards to be able to buy the fuse she needed to continue being able to breathe with that machine. And so I had done a, a news interview with, um, I think it was Fox 17 at the time that aired a couple of days after that. And um, th those are the kinds of people that are still being prohibited from being able to go and do what they need to do. So that same woman actually reached out to me a couple of days ago because this new order is coming into effect and it seems to really put the onus on the business owners. And at any rate, uh, Deborah was having a struggle with just trying to get medications and getting her food because she was not medically able to go in with a mask and she doesn't have anybody to help her go get those items. So she called me very fearful that she's going to end up starving to death or not having her needed medications. So yeah, those are some of the very things that are, you know, it's so disturbing that people would have to call me to ask, how do I get my food? Because I'm being stopped from going into the store. So are there, I can, I'll ask you, Catherine, because listen, I understand that, and I'll give the benefit of the doubt, that public uh, officials and uh, maybe public health officials, they want to enact some policies that they feel might keep people safer. Um, how do you do that in an effective way if you're a governor to make sure not only that the policies are clear about what should be done and who should be uh, held accountable for these policies, but also that it's communicated effectively? So that people are up to speed because, uh, you know, the reason we're having this conversation today is that we're continually getting these questions and people are asking and they're afraid of what they can and can't do. And, uh, and it's become an issue. Right. So, yeah, as far as things being communicated clearly, obviously we've seen that's not happening. We wouldn't need, you know, literally hundreds of FAQs on the governor's website if, these orders are being communicated clearly, but, and, and you also mentioned, you know, employers wanting to make sure, or business owners wanting to make sure they're keeping their customers and their employees safe, which, yeah, we all want to do that, but it's important to realize, number one, that the, the science behind it, the medicine behind all these things, is not, it's, it's nowhere near conclusive. It's literally, from what I've seen, a split, a divide right down the middle of medical professionals, doctors, uh, immunologists, epidemiologists, all of the people that are studying these very things day in and day out. Um, I've talked with people that are, you know, experts in the, the PPE field as well. Um, there's not any even close to a consensus that wearing masks in public or even social distancing is going to stop coronavirus at all. So oh. you have that piece, but even, even if it all did, even if the science and the numbers and everything pointed to wearing masks was essential to stopping COVID-19, we need to remember that our US and our state constitutions do not allow for the government to have more power than any other time, simply because we're in a time of emergency or crisis or whatnot. So uh, no matter what, the government can try to issue all the policies that it would like, but those do not necessarily mean that um, it can translate into criminal or uh, business licensing penalties for individuals. So. Um, it's important too. It, it, Governor Whitmer, I think it was on Friday, Thursday or Friday, was talking about how these executive orders are law, and it was even written in the, um, you know, the informational words that st stream along the bottom of her press conferences as we're going along. Uh, that the, it's a law to wear a mask, and we've heard Dana Nessel say that. I believe she even said it when President Trump was here at the Ford plant a month or two ago. Um, but they they're not laws. So the one thing I would suggest to people uh, to start with. Um, listeners, please make sure you check out um, MCL, Michigan Codified Law, 8.8. .8. It literally defines what a law is. And so if you look at it, we have the laws that we know of, right, that are passed by the legislature. Uh, we also have initiated laws adopted by the people. That's something that people can do by petition and get enough signatures and whatnot. And then the only other option here is executive orders by the governor that are 
specifically done under Article 5, Section 2 of our state constitution, which only deal with the reorganization of the executive branch. I'm going to pause you there for a second, Catherine. We're going to come back on live on the air on uh, Wood Radio and be right back. Hold on one second, folks. Morning at 10.06 for the very latest on the news, what's happening and commentary and making sense of the world. It's aptly named the Glenn Beck Program. Coming up on Wood Radio. Hey, welcome back in. It's Justin Barkley. Attorney Catherine Henry joins us right now. We're live on Facebook as well for this conversation. Unmasked Michigan. What you need to know. What you need to know about these mask mandates that have gone into effect. Attorney Catherine Henry joins us right now on News Radio Wood 1300 and 106.9 FM. It's Unmasked Michigan. We're streaming live on Facebook as well. So hi to the Facebook audience. If you have questions, you can ask them in the Facebook live stream in the chat. You can also ask them online on the, uh, the the phone number as well at 616-774-2424. Uh, Catherine was just talking about the questions of the legality of the executive orders and some of these other things. So we'll get into that coming up. But when we left off on the radio, Catherine, we were talking about businesses. What should businesses know and do? Uh, just I'm, I'm sure you're getting the same questions. Uh, I went to... Um, I've been out and about all weekend and, and uh, starting to see things kind of ramp up. The first thing I noticed on Fridays, I went to get ice cream and I'm out standing at the outside and every person that I saw walk up outside had a mask on. And I thought, well, this is strange. This is new. So the word travels fast. And if they want to, I don't look, you, you can do what, whatever you like, but I wasn't wearing a mask and I was able to socially distance from them. So I guess I was within the, 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 the legalities of what, what this, this order uh, requires. And then, but I did notice that it already started to change people's behavior. The next thing I noticed is we went out this weekend and we had, uh, we had eaten out a couple of different times in a couple of different restaurants outside and all of it seemed to go very well, very smoothly. Uh, yesterday I noticed that I won't name this place, but we picked up pizza at a place and uh, on the doors, there were like 17 signs. I, I, and and I, I just to feel for these business owners because they're trying to cover. They just want to be open after everything that they've gone through in the pandemic. And, of course, they want to keep their customers safe. They want to keep their employees safe. But they're also trying not to get the threat of getting their, their, their licenses taken from them. So they're just, they just want to be open at this point. So I'm seeing all these signs and I stopped to read them all. And I go, what in the world? And um, they're just trying to figure out how to operate and how to do it without having any issue. What do you recommend to these businesses right now for trying to wade through all of this? Yeah. So <clears throat> unfortunately we're experiencing something that I've never uh, even seen in my entire life where we have so many different levels uh, and branches of government involved in completely ignoring our constitution or the foundational concepts of what our government was structured to do right from the beginning. Um, so before we go down the rabbit holes of all the different pieces that everybody is arguing over, we need to remember that our constitution is in place 24-7 365 during times of emergency, during times of hardship or famine, disease, it doesn't matter. Our constitution, our U.S. and our state constitution is not allowed to be suspended because of coronavirus. So um, it, that's really the basic premise because, um, and, you know, we can't forget things like Article 6 of our U.S. constitution, which tells us flat out the U.S. constitution is the supreme law of the land. So if we have an executive order or a state statute or even a state constitutional provision that seems to uh, transect something from the US constitution, it's not valid. So these executive orders are not, uh, they're not constitutional in the slightest, besides the fact that they don't even follow Michigan law, that that ship sailed April 30th. But the one thing that people need to know is that you have a constitutional right. And the more we can stand up together and stop it and just continue to go about business as we know we should be doing, then that's, I mean, that's really how we can help this, right? We need to have a, a big change all across the board because if you have 90% of businesses and individuals all across our state acting out of fear for ramifications, then they're just, the governor's just gonna keep going down this road and, and steamrolling people. So we need more people willing to stand up 
and do the right thing. And we need more attorneys that are um, ready and willing to take on cases for business owners when they encounter these situations. And, and there already are attorneys that are stepping up to, to sue uh, on behalf of businesses. But um, for those businesses that you know are just feeling overwhelmed by all of this, just keep in mind, if you look at the actual order, her order says, yes, individuals have to wear masks. Yes, a business is now supposedly responsible for enforcing that, but they're only supposed they're only supposed to enforce that upon individuals that are required by the order to wear masks. So, so this is a great question. We're getting some of it in here. Um, Paula asks on Facebook, and if you're streaming live right now on World Radio's Facebook page, you can ask questions there in the comment stream, or you can call in and ask at 616-774-2424. But Paula asks, if you don't wear a mask because of a medical condition, can people ask what your medical condition is? And so how would they know, I think, is the, the question. How, how would the business know? And the governor did not only really encourage the businesses to enforce or ask or tell these people that or refuse them service, but the, she also really kind of made a point to tell other people to become mask police and to, to, to confront each other about this, which seems problematic as well. Uh, but how would someone know whether or not this person has a, a medical issue or, and, and are they allowed to ask is the question. Correct. And so that's why it's important for business owners to make sure you're reading that whole part about paragraph or three of her order that you're supposed to enforce this and not let customers in without wearing a mask unless you know they're not part of that required by court order section. So section two of this order, paragraph two, says that if you're not medically able to tolerate a face covering, then you don't have to. It also, uh, paragraph G there also um, says that if you are communicating with someone who is hearing impaired and essentially needs to read lips, they, uh, those individuals are also not required to wear masks. So those are two different kinds of disabilities that are a, at play here. Uh, and that's very important to recognize that we don't necessarily, when you look at me, uh, anybody watching through Facebook Live right now, can, are, you can't tell that I'm hearing impaired. You also can't tell that I have a breathing condition. So um, for business owners in the last couple of days that have tried to require people to somehow walk around with identification about all their medical uh, needs and what their disabilities are, that's not, first of all, it's not in the order. This order does not give businesses the right to ask for private health information about individuals or anything about their disabilities. It does not allow employees at the door to stop people from going in unless they're somehow able to prove to some sort of uh, degree that they have some sort of medical exemption or uh, disability exemption. So businesses need to be very careful. And the, the governor has put people in a hard spot because she is using those policing mechanisms of having businesses report on other businesses or individuals reporting on businesses. That's unacceptable. What we need to realize is that, um, yeah, we're in theory, she's trying to protect all the people that might get COVID-19. And then if they get COVID-19, they might be so immunocompromised that they end up dying from this. That's a, a good and noble cause, but it can't be used as the blanket um, mechanism by which then we're violating the rights of everybody else. What about every single disabled person that cannot physically wear a mask or those who have had some sort of trauma? I can't even tell you how many people have reached out to me, Justin, that have been physically assaulted in the past or a victim of you know a sexual assault or a mugging or anything like that. And these people, many, many, many people say, I can't even wear a turtleneck. I can't wear any kind of head covering at all because I, I'm getting PTSD from that. Sometimes it's so, it makes me so anxious. I, I get so nauseous that I pass out. These are real issues that people have and no business is allowed to ask the individual why they can't wear the mask. That's not the right to know. So now it's not the same exception for people are walking around with these cards that say it's a HIPAA exemption or, or anything like that. It's not HIPAA. These are not doctor's offices that are releasing this information. It's private entities and sometimes state entities that are trying to get that information from us. But no, to answer you, they don't, businesses need to be mindful that they have zero right to ask people about their disability. So how they enforce then whether people are wearing masks, that's exactly, it's impossible for them to do that without violating the rights of individuals. So 
Yeah. Unmasked Michigan. We're talking about what you need to know today as this mask mandate has gone into effect. Attorney Catherine Henry joins us right now. Jody on Facebook said, I've been denied five times this morning and I'm a cancer patient. There are some issues that need to be dealt with with this. And uh, I know people are going to struggle to find the right way to handle it. That's why we're talking to this uh, attorney this morning to, ha to have this conversation so you can hear these things. Unfortunately, when there's a press conference and a, an executive order comes out and then you read a headline and it's on Facebook or it's on Twitter or you watch the news, there's not a lot of context and nuance because they don't go into some of these things that, that, that need to that need to really be explored. And we give you an opportunity to do that. We do have some questions on the phone right now. Kelly's on. We'll go to her first. Kelly, good morning. You're on with attorney Catherine Henry, News Radio Wood 1300 and 106.9 FM. I'm Justin Barkley, and this is West Michigan Live. Good morning, Kelly. Yeah, good morning. Uh, the question that I have, or maybe it's more of a questionable write-up of another executive order that's an overstep and a power grab. But aside from that, uh, if you have asthma or COPD, and, you know, I was in a store last week. I, you said, you mentioned Menards. I was in Menards last week, and I was sitting down taking a rest break while they were checking on an item, whether it was in stock or not. So I took my mask off. And then a manager came up to me and said that I would have to leave the store unless I put my mask back on. So I put my mask back on. I'm not trying to get in a big argument with anybody, but at the same time, you know, where does all this stand? Is it really law or is it just an executive order? And okay. Good question, uh, Catherine. And I know you handled some of this when we were on our break in uh, Facebook live, but now we're back on the air. Uh, Kelly's point is this law, is it uh, an executive order or is it executive order law? How does that all work? So 100%, there is no doubt at all in the law. This is not a law. Our, our Michigan codified law, that's, you know, our statutes that uh, have to be subservient to our state constitution and our U.S. constitution. Our state statutes define an MCL 8.8 .8, that a law specifically is either a public act by the legislature. So it goes through both houses and the governor signs it or they do a two thirds vote to veto, uh, override her veto or uh, B, uh, an initiated law adopted by the people that's done through uh, the petition process, and then you get a vote by the majority of voters to bring a new law into effect, or C, an executive order that is specifically done through Article 5, Section 2 of our state constitution, which only allows for executive orders that are uh, dealing with the reorganization of the executive branch itself. There is no legal or constitutional authority for the governor to be creating laws, uh, let alone to be creating criminal penalties or licensing penalties. All of those things have to be done through the legislature. And it's interesting, um, for those of you that have been following the legislature's lawsuit against the governor, uh, they filed, the governor and her attorneys, uh, filed with the Michigan Supreme Court on May 29th a brief that anybody who has a copy of it, and it's available on my website, restorefreedommi.com, I believe, um, you could look at page 42 of the brief where they clearly say, the governor's attorneys, the legislature writes the law, the governor follows the law, and, quote, only the legislature may amend the law. So, that's a huge point that even the governor's own attorneys are acknowledging this is not a law. None of these executive orders are law. They cannot be used as a means of punishment for individuals, no matter how many times she says it in a press conference. And so that's why there are a few attorneys that are stepping up and saying, if you are uh, prosecuted at all for uh, violating these executive orders, reach out to us because we will represent you. This is it's not okay. So absolutely not. If anybody even remotely has that question or you're just tuning in, these executive orders do not have the force of law because the governor, uh, it does say that in one of our statutes that her executive orders for these emergency powers do have the force of law, but the legislature cannot give her what they are legally not authorized to give her anyway. And our state constitution is very clear. There's a separation of powers. The legislature is the only body who is allowed to exercise that that power of legislating. So absolutely not, no unequivocal, I mean, it's completely unequivocal. There is no way that these executive orders are deemed as laws that can be enforced against people with penalties. We're running short on time here. So I'm gonna try and go through, breeze through some more of these uh, questions on either Facebook 
We're also uh, on the phone at 616-774-2424. But if you are watching this on Facebook or you're listening on the radio, go back, find it on Facebook. You will watch and, and listen to the entire thing. And also click share so we can get some of this information out there because I think we need some context and we need some clarity behind some of these things. That's what we're trying to bring you today with Attorney Catherine Henry. Uh, Kelly, thank you for your question and your call this morning. Dave has a question. Good morning. You're on with Attorney Catherine Henry on West Michigan Live. Well, good morning. Thank you for taking my call. I'll try and make this quick. Uh, I appreciate Kelly's call uh, just a moment ago. Uh, mine's related to asthma also, but I'm in the transportation industry, and um, I'm governed by Department of Transportation, uh, DOT laws, rules, regulations for health and all that. But uh, a lot of the deliveries that I make, uh, these places require me to wear a mask, and my employer enforces that. Um, but with difficulty in breathing and so on, um, if I don't wear a mask, uh, my employer will reprimand up to and including discharge. So how does all this work with me? Uh, good question, Dave. What if your employer is asking you to wear a mask, Catherine? Yeah, so that's, uh, I wish I had a clear, easy answer for how all of this works. The unfortunate thing is uh, our founders never thought they would ever see the day where people would be having to fight over the ability to breathe clean air or fresh air. Uh, so those things are not spelled out uh, that clear in the constitution. But the, um, the important thing to realize is that our, um, our own Supreme Court justices have said things like, and this is Justice Viviano just last month in, uh, in June, where he writes that uh, these executive orders that it is indisputable that these executive orders impinge on the constitutional liberties of our citizens. So uh, it, it's very clear this, you know, for those employers that are out there, uh, my husband is one of them, you know, uh, they got one of these letters on Friday that says, we will not tolerate you not wearing a mask. We will issue write-ups. We will terminate you if necessary. You have to wear a mask. They are, first of all, ignoring the executive order. Okay, so employers pay attention that there's a reason why there are exceptions in here. So do not force employees to wear them as a blanket rule because that is discrimination. Even if the executive orders were legally enforceable, that is still discrimination because it goes outside of what that says. But yeah, you do not have to be forced uh, legally. Now how that plays out, that's where we're gonna have to have a team of attorneys stepping up to help people sort this out because it's not right. I wanna talk about some of this. Attorney Catherine Henry's on the phone. We, we're gonna. We're going to begin to wrap things up here, but we'll continue our conversation on Facebook Live so you can stick with us. Get your questions answered, specifically if you have something that you want to know. I've got a couple of questions in here that are uh, that people really want to know. Maybe they're personal or something that relates to their business. But, Catherine, how do you recommend an individual, before we wrap up here, we talked about business, but individuals handle this. So specifically, if they have a medical or there's an exemption that's within this executive order that they fall within, uh, how do you recommend they treat this when they're out and about at a business or a place that uh, maybe someone's asking them to wear a mask and they, they can't? So the easiest thing I would say, as silly as it seems, everyone should print out in paper, actual real, real paper, the Executive Order 2020-147. Flip it open to page three have it highlighted ahead of time, the section two that says this requirement does not apply to individuals who, and then highlight the parts that apply to you. So if you are B, not medically able to tolerate a face covering, or you're down in G where you are um, constantly, constantly needing to communicate with someone who is hearing disabled or otherwise needing to communicate by reading lips or whatnot, have those provisions already highlighted and keep that executive order with you. That's what I've done. I've literally had to show these, this executive order or any of the predecessor uh, executive orders to the various stores and restaurants and whatnot all around our state because they'll sit there and argue about how it's the law or how it's the executive order that says that. And they're just focusing on one teeny tiny piece. So definitely as silly as it seems, Everyone out there, please print that executive order. Don't just have it on your phone because no, you know, there's a lot of these business owners that won't even look at that. Have it printed, have it in front of them, have those provisions highlighted and tell them that they are not allowed. There's nothing in this order that allows them to ask you your specific medical conditions or disabilities, but they simply have to acknowledge that the law accounts for that and this executive order accounts for that. Some uh, great 
advice and uh, great uh, clarity on some of this in context. So trying to get you some of that in the nuance. We'll continue our conversation with attorney Catherine Henry. I know you've got a website. People have more questions. They may want to reach out. What is that, Catherine? Yes, it's Restore Freedom mi.com so restore freedom and mi meaning for michigan.com great place for people to go and if you don't see the answers on the frequently asked questions site please set us up on the contact us page towards the bottom there's going to be information on how to get questions for uh, these legalities or if somebody truly needs representation or they just want some general guidance on a situation fill out that form so we can get you routed uh, directly to me and figure out how to most uh, quickly answer your questions because this is something that we all need to take very seriously. If you're looking for a link, somebody's asked for it online right now of the executive order itself. We'll make sure we put that online. And uh, of course, in the the show notes at woodradio.com, you can always listen back to any bit of the conversations we have on West Michigan Live. Go to the iHeartRadio app, search West Michigan Live. More conversations just like this one. Attorney Catherine Henry, thank you for being here. If you're with us on Facebook, stay with us. We'll be right back. We continue our conversation on Facebook Live. This is World Radio. I'm Justin Barkley. It's West Michigan Live. All right, Facebook, we continue here. Uh, Catherine, thank you so much for doing this. I know you probably have to uh, run pretty soon, but I know we have plenty of uh, questions that are coming in still on Facebook and on uh, the phone. So let me grab a couple of these real quickly. And I may have to break away just to say goodbye on the air, but that'll be fine. We'll start with uh, Patty, who is up first. Patty, good morning. You're on with Catherine this morning. Good morning. Thank you for answering. Um, <clears throat> concerns as a business owner and someone that suffers from physical ability not to wear a mask. I think um, if Catherine would uh, think about this, the Disability Act doesn't clearly state pulmonary anxiety issues. Um, as a business, if it did, I would have to adhere to that disability act. Um, there's nothing concerning um, mask, pulmonary, um, any of them issues. So I think the first step is to get the disability act updated. Um, and that's where we need to begin with. It is a dis disability and why they don't recognize it, I'm not sure. Another um, suggestion, I see a lot of posts concerning just wear a mask. And I ask the people to please go on the Facebook page for the American Disability Act and read the stories. Um, there needs to be compassion. And I think that starts with education. And I think when you start reading the personal stories, um, simple issues of parking, when the door is closed, where the handicapped parking is, and people can't access a store, um, a lot of them issues need to be resolved. And I think a lot of times people just need to be aware. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I don't know if you guys can hear me. Um, it looks like Justin's talking, so I'm not sure if he can hear me, but um, to answer you on, on Facebook anyway, for those of you who heard what the question was, um, the question was essentially talking about, uh, not so much question, but comment was about the Disabilities Act and how uh, the inability to wear a mask is not necessarily described as a uh, disability. And the thing is, it's not our job to prove that we need to be able to breathe fresh air. It's not our job to be able to prove to somebody that we have a disability that stops us from being able to wear a mask. Um, and so this executive order, when it talks about those who cannot medically tolerate a, co a facial covering, it does not say anything about the Americans with Disabilities Act. It doesn't say anything about any kind of other disability law whatsoever, because uh, that wouldn't make any sense. We've never had to be able to argue, I have a disability simply because I would like to breathe. Um, so, no, I, I'm not sure that I agree that we need to modify our disability laws. What we need to do is get this settled once and for all that we as humans, without a doctor's note, have the right to breathe, period. Um, but especially, uh, even the governor recognizes that those, those who cannot medically tolerate a face covering, that's it. That's all it says. It doesn't say they have to prove it. It doesn't say it has to be a medically recognized disability relating to not wearing a face covering. 
Um, it doesn't say anything like that because that's not, it, it, that wouldn't comport with our system of government and being able to have uh, our rights that are guaranteed to us. So uh, definitely it's, it's an issue we need to get clarified all across our government and throughout our communities, but don't feel like as an individual that you have to prove to someone that you have a disability or what that disability is or how that impacts your ability to wear a mask. You are not required to do that. And employees and employers, uh, businesses basically that are questioning these individuals, you can't do that. There's nothing in this executive order that allows you to do that, even if we're going to assume that it's just as legal as a law is. It's not, but even so, it does not allow you to do that. So please people, please read the actual language of this executive order before you try to enforce it upon somebody and end up opening yourself up for liability. I guess that's, that's the point blank uh, point here is if you're a business owner and you're not paying attention to the full exemptions and everything that are recognized even in her own executive order, you are opening yourself up to a ton of liability for people to be able to sue you for the, the issues and the discrimination, absolutely. Steve has a question. Catherine Henry, uh, Henry on with us right now, Attorney Catherine Henry. Is this executive order in effect for outdoor church services or church services, uh, period? There, are, That's another one of these pieces of the exemption. There are a couple of different pieces, but um, maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so it's funny because in prior orders, our governor has done things like with the stay-at-home orders and whatnot, um, that she's exempted it with very curious language, anything to do with the religious practices issue. And in here, one of the exemptions to not wearing a mask is if you are officiating at a religious service. The, the thing though, is that, um, like I mentioned at the first you know, segment here or time that we were on, um, I was explaining that our constitution, it's in place no matter what. You know, whether we're having a bad day, whether we have an, a pandemic or, you know, there's something else that's uh, injuring or killing people all across our nation, our constitution is still in place. And so it doesn't get set aside. The governor doesn't get to override our constitutional freedom. So if we look at the First Amendment, it says that we are guaranteed the ability to have the free exercise of religion, the free exercise, not just the free belief. So if you want to go to church, whether you are doing an indoor service or an outside service, you have the right to do that. You can sit on every single row or pew. You don't have to sit every other pew. The, the government cannot make a church keep people socially distant while they are trying to assemble or while they are trying to worship. No matter what executive order, no matter what statute might come down in the future, we have a First Amendment right to be able to assemble peacefully and to speak freely, and to have that freedom of religion, free exercise of religion, not just of a mere belief in God, but to be able to freely exercise what that means to us. So if you are trying to go to church, and you are being uh, threatened by law enforcement or whomever with uh, some sort of penalties because you're not wearing a mask, please reach out to me because we need to make sure that everyone across the state understands, especially in that context, you cannot be stopped from attending church service because you are not able to, or not even willing to wear a mask. So absolutely keep that in mind, regardless of what anything else says, article six of our, of our U S constitution says that the United States constitution is the supreme law of the land. And that first amendment, in that constitution says, no matter what, you have the right to freely exercise your religion and to peaceably assemble. So uh, hopefully that, that makes it perfectly clear, uh, but there is no penalty even in the executive order uh, geared towards people that are trying to exercise those First Amendment rights. Attorney Catherine Henry, we're on Facebook Live now as we continue. And Catherine, let me know um, when your cutoff point is that we need to, because I know you've got to, uh, other things happening today, but this is important conversation. We'll go as long as we can, or we got some more questions. Um, so one of these questions actually from Rachel, who's on the phone and you can ask question on the phone. If you'd like at 616-774-2424. Uh, but Rachel, again, you have a question for attorney Catherine Henry. Yes. Um, should I, when I wear the mask, I, a neighbor told me that what the symptoms sound like were like a panic attack. Should I possibly go to a doctor and get, like, apparently diagnosed? I still have a sore throat from having to use it yesterday at work. 
Does she need a diagnosis in order to not be able to wear it's causing a pan attack or she's having anxiety does she do you need a diagnosis if you're not medically able to tolerate that or is that just something that uh that you would know yourself absolutely not nothing in this order says that people have to prove in any way shape or form that they are medically not able to tolerate that mask and and it's not it, it doesn't even make common sense for people to do that um so no, if you have if you have panic attacks while wearing a mask, if you have uh, just struggle with with breathing in general, uh, you know I've had asthma and some sleep issues and you know breathing. I don't get all the oxygen that I need to in my body. I don't necessarily have a medical issue that they would be able to spell out and write me a doctor's note for not wearing a mask. But I'm I'm unable or unable to breathe when I wear one. You do not need a doctor's note when you are medically unable to wear a mask. Governor Whitmer is not requiring that. She hasn't put that anywhere in this order. It simply says, for those who cannot medically tolerate a face covering, this order does not apply to you, period. So do not feel like you have to go get a doctor's note from anyone. Um, a lot of doctor's offices aren't even giving them because they're being threatened on both sides of the issue and they don't wanna lose their licenses so they're just trying to stay out of that whole piece, which is a shame because we have people who are medically unable to wear masks and the doctors just go, yeah, I want nothing to do with it. I don't want to be in the middle. Wow. And I can understand. It's very similar for businesses. And we, we've put people in this uh, kind of strange spot uh, with each other. And I, I know that businesses want to make sure that their customers and their employees uh, are as safe as possible. Uh, but at the same time, they don't want to discriminate against uh, people either, but they're being they're being kind of threatened with this, the fact that they might lose everything that they work for, especially after coming out of the pandemic and and being shut down for so long. This really puts a lot of folks between a rock and a hard place. Um, and this is coming from somebody who I, I will wear a mask. Most times I, I can tolerate it. Uh, I have had some issues uh if, if I wear it too long, I get a, a bit of a headache and there's some issues with that. And I know that, you know, uh, I've talked with some folks about that and, and my healthcare care uh, uh, provider about that specifically. And I will go with their guidance on this as well. But I'm also the kind of person that uh, I, and I don't know where we kind of gotten off track here, but it understands that some people just won't be able to wear these masks. And maybe we should just have a little more grace for each other and a little more understanding. Um, and, and I don't know how we got into this point where we attack each other, but the governor is actually asking for that in a lot of ways here. She's asking for people to confront each other. So part of this idea of having this conversation today was really to make sure that you are able to hear all sides of the story and get the context that you need for it. Uh, Catherine, we're going to wrap things up here in a little bit, but before we do, we had another question and I know that Facebook is going to show this to people at different times again, but if, if you have more questions, we'll tell you where to get your answers from Catherine. But also, if you're a person and you walk into a store and you're not medically or you're exempt, you fit one of the exemptions from the executive order, Catherine's given some advice here. Catherine, why don't you tell people, again, what they should do with printing up the executive order and, and how uh, they should and maybe calmly interacting with people. And really, this is educated. Unfortunately, you, you shouldn't have to do these things, but you might have to. Yeah, so definitely um, if you have any kind of um, issue that allows you or, or prohibits you from being able to wear that mask, whether it's an exemption under the, the um, hearing impaired area or um, being medically impaired or anything like that, um, please make sure that you go on to the legislature's website and look at the left-hand side of their um, the, the menu options, there's a place to click on executive orders and you can go and find the executive orders that are issued in 2020. Click on executive order issue uh, 147. You can also go to the governor's website. I think it should be up there by now. Uh, but again, it's executive order 2020-147. Print it out. Don't just have it on your phone. Print it out. Have that section two highlighted that says the requirement to wear a face covering does not apply to individuals who, and then highlight the provision below that pertains to you so that you know exactly where it is, you can point them to it, 
And for individuals who are claiming at these, you know, employees of these stores, well, it's a law, you have to follow it. You'll have that executive order right in your hands. Uh, to anybody else that, you know, these business owners that are worried about this or people that want to go to a church service without wearing a mask, any of those things, I want you to think about this. Paragraph three, it says that people, uh, that businesses specifically, no business that is open to the public may provide a service to a customer uh, unless the customer is wearing a face mask or a face covering as required by this order. Let's think about this. It says as required by this order. So that acknowledges that that paragraph two that goes into all those exceptions, people are not, not everyone is required to wear this face mask. How would the government prove in their case against you, whether it's a licensing issue, whether it's a criminal charge that you're being you know, brought against you, how is the government going to prove that you willfully violated this order? If you do not have the right, it doesn't have any indication anywhere in here that you have the right to ask an individual what their disability or exemption is. How can you possibly do that? And if you did uh, even ask them are what people are supposed to be able to prove it to you and bring all kinds of documentation with them, uh, how would the government be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you are willfully violating this directive to prohibit people uh, from entering the store who are not wearing masks and not also exempted? They can't. They can't prove that. So. It's just a matter of scamming your ground, doing the right thing, allowing people to make their own choices regarding their own medical conditions. If they need to wear a mask in public, they should be able to do that without being publicly shamed. If they need to not wear a mask in public, they should be able to do that without being medically shamed. Would you sit there and look at someone in a wheelchair and uh, give them an evil eye because they're unable to walk around? Or when you see someone who's got oxygen tanks, uh, are you going to give them a hard time because they struggle with breathing? If you see a wounded veteran who has lost a limb and they're, uh, you know, hopping around with a crutch or whatnot, are you going to look at them as though they're somehow less of a person because they physically are not able to quite do the same things that they used to be able to do? No. And society would shame anyone who tried to shame those individuals. We would not tolerate that kind of judgment. So we shouldn't do it now. Please make sure that you are thinking about this. The government can't prove you're willfully violating because you have no way of asking and obtaining the information on who is exempt. So don't be fearful of all of that. Stand up, defend yourself, defend the rights of others, acknowledge the constitution doesn't go away in these situations and carry around that very executive order because the executive order itself does not say the businesses can do that to people because you don't have the right to ask them all that private information. So please keep all those points in mind. I'll ask another question uh, be- about this before we let you go. If somebody does get fined, we've heard that there may be a $500 fine for an individual, that type of thing. We've also seen and heard uh, some reports from uh, sheriff's departments that sheriffs, certain law enforcement may not be enforcing this for various different reasons. It really puts law enforcement in a tough spot as well in a really challenging and tricky time, um, that's that's questionable too. So who would be writing the tickets? And then if you do get one, what should you do? So first of all, you're right. We have a lot of law enforcement agencies that are acknowledging they cannot enforce these orders. And I, I can kind of agree with the concept that they're being put in a tough spot, but the, the law enforcement agencies that have stood up and said they're not going to enforce them, they recognize that they're not actually in a tight spot because every single one of them took an oath under Article 11, Section 1 of our state constitution to uphold the U.S. and Michigan constitutions, period. They did not uh, take an oath to uphold or enforce uh, e- any particular laws or executive orders because our founders acknowledged that executive orders and laws, and even laws issued, you know, gone through the whole legislative process, they could still be written in a way that violates any provision of the constitution. So um, yeah, we need to, um, we just need to keep those concepts in mind um, as we're going through. And I'm sorry, Justin, I can't believe I forgot the the first part of what your question was, if you can repeat that. Well, so it was, what do you do if you get, if you do get a a $500 ticket? 
Yes. So, and I believe you'd also asked about the fine. So what's important to note here is paragraph eight of this executive order 2020-147 says that consistent with the provisions of the Emergency Management Act of 1976 and the Emergency Powers of Governor Act of 1945, that a willful violation of this order is a misdemeanor. But she does this time come out and say that no term of confinement may be imposed for not wearing a mask. So she literally says, Finally, for once, yeah, I think it should be a misdemeanor. It should be a crime to violate my orders, but you can't be jailed. You cannot be confined for violating this. So first of all, keep that in mind. So if you are um, being with any kind of citation um, or licensing issue, number one, you need to fight it. Absolutely fight it. Um, and hopefully we will have more and more attorneys all across the state who are willing to step up and help people sort through those things. I certainly uh, am willing to help people fight those. Absolutely. Especially if it's a criminal citation for not wearing a mask. But I obviously am only one person. So uh, on that note, if any of your listeners, Justin, if any of them have legal experience, legal secretary, paralegal attorney, whether they're retired or not, I would love to have them come on board as a volunteer, just as I'm doing this volunteer, because if we have a whole team of legal professionals that can guide people and answer those questions, I would love to be able to say to people, yes, I will absolutely do my best to be able to represent you in court if needed. Um, so people, you had mentioned earlier that website, the website is restorefreedommi.com. If people go to the contact us tab and then scroll all the way to the bottom where it says, um, legal questions, representation, uh, advice, or, or whatnot, click on the one that's appropriate to you. If you feel like you, um, you know, you've gotten a citation, you've gotten a misdemeanor ticket uh, for not wearing a mask, and you want to be able to fight it, and you're hoping that I would be able to represent you, click on that first option. If you're looking for representation, fill that on out, and uh, we'll see what we could do to be able to help you with that. Um, if you just simply have a question, maybe you want to represent yourself in whatever the situation is, but you want me to help guide you with that, please fill that form out so I can go through that and I can walk you through the different legal provi provisions that you can absolutely use to fight in your defense. But yes, please reach out uh, to me and we'll do our best. If you haven't heard back or we're just not able to help you because we're, we just don't have the manpower time available, um, please don't just give in. Fight it. Absolutely. Whether you're doing it with an attorney or not, you have rights. And the government has a huge burden of proof here to be able to prove that you are not in one of these exceptions. It's not your burden of proof to prove that you can't wear a mask or that you're exempted under uh, paragraph two here. It's not your burden if you're a business owner to prove that you somehow uh, let in people that didn't have a medical exemption or some other exemption there, you have a right to do what you're doing. And if the government wants to try to step in and add an additional penalty or burden on you, it's the government's burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt that you in fact committed that offense or that crime. And they can't meet all those elements. So don't step down, stand up, make sure you know your rights, carry the constitution around with you if you need to, tuck it in your purse or your briefcase, Make sure you know that this executive order has those exceptions and the constitution has no exceptions. You have rights there. And so does everyone else. I'm sure we'll be talking more about this in the coming days, but Linda has a great point and a question about teachers as schools uh, look to what they might be doing as they open up. She asked, are teachers exempt since schools, they're giving speeches or lessons to an audience, the students every day, uh, such as the exemption, uh, Jay, for uh, some of those exemptions. Would that, would that be included? Absolutely. Uh, definitely. If you are a teacher, whether you're a kindergarten teacher, uh, like the amazing Miss Ward that I know, uh, or if you are a, um, a high school teacher or a college professor, and you are in front of other individuals, and you are giving a speech or giving them information, that is very clearly exempted under article, or excuse me, paragraph two, subsection J here, that if you're giving a speech for an audience, 
you are exempted from wearing a mask. And that goes hand in hand with the exemption we talked about on uh, letter G, because people are not required to wear a mask if they are communicating with someone who is hearing impaired or otherwise disabled and where the ability to see the mouth is essential to communication. So especially if you're in the elementary grades and you're teaching those little kids, they need to be able to see you and not have you just hiding behind a mask. They need to be able to see your facial expressions. They need to be able to understand and pick up on those cues. They're learning to pay attention to those cues that, that are going to help them be able to um, function well in society and being able to read body language and facial expressions. They learn a big chunk of that while they're in school. So absolutely teachers, make sure that you understand if you are giving that information to students, if you, are, if you have an audience, they need to be able to hear your message uh, in more ways than one. And so you are definitely one of these exemptions under there. Absolutely. Lots of questions. And uh, if you continue to leave them here, we'll try and get you some, uh, some answers over the next few days. And Catherine, we'll have to have you back uh, as this all unfolds and develops. But I really appreciate you joining us again. Um, we'll post in here uh, that link to the executive order if you want to do like Catherine has recommended and print that out. If you do have an exemption, something that would fall under the exemptions in the executive order, uh, you might want to take that with you so that you can explain it to people. Un unfortunately, though, Catherine, I mean, there's a lot of people that are uh, kind of decided to, you know, like, I don't, I don't really have the time or the energy to fight this every time I go somewhere. And, uh, and businesses are going to feel that as well, because they're going to be people that change their behavior and their shopping based upon who is, and it goes both ways on this. So, so I understand. Um, but we wanted to give you a little bit more context and clarity because nowadays everything is in short headlines. You only hear one piece. You don't hear the full story. And really, we want to keep you not just informed, but empowered. And uh, Catherine, thank you for helping us do that today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. RestoreFreedomMI.com is your website again. Absolutely. RestoreFreedomMI.com and our email is RestoreFreedomMI at Gmail. Yep. Thanks for being here, Catherine. Have a great day. We appreciate you. Yes. Thank you. Have a great day.